Welcome to People Who Inspire. I'm your host, Mary Drellisak. Our guest today holds a special place in my heart. He is my brother-in-law, Ron Schroyer. A retired Master Chief in the U.S. Navy, he has devoted his career to serving our country and his retired life to serving our Connellsville PA community. We're gonna talk about his life and his veteran outreach. Let's meet Ron. So glad you're here. So you joined the Navy. How old were you? I was 18, 18 years old. It was the um, uh, uh, the fall of my senior year at Connellsville High School, uh, Connellsville area. It was the first year of the Falcons, 1967, and uh, uh, I, it was during the, the draft period. Of course, you know everybody had to had to sign up for the draft, and uh, I decided I was going to have a choice. Uh, so. Um, Actually, an Air Force individual, um, uh, Russell Williams, uh, he's, he's the one that uh, uh, let me know about the Naval Aviation Program. And uh, I joined the Naval Air Reserve out of Norfolk, Virginia, Naval Air Station, Norfolk, uh, in October of 1966. Okay. The, no. mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was going to say... Well, well, first of all, I've always been I've always been intrigued about Navy and Navy airplanes and uh, carriers, especially uh, being being a um, uh, World War II um, a baby boomer. OK, um, during the 50s, you know, all these all the toys that were made and so on and so forth were post uh, pa post World War II type mm -hmm. toys and that kind of thing. But I always had this thing about the Navy mm -hmm. and naval aviation and carrier operations and that kind of thing. And um, it, it just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. It stuck with me. And uh, I was in the Navy, the Navy Reserve. I was uh, uh, two days a month uh, while I was a senior in high school and I was getting paid. Okay, I was in training, jet engine mechanics, flight, in, flight engineering on the uh, C-54. Uh, which is a um, uh, Berlin airlift type aircraft back then. And they would come pick us up at Allegheny County Airport, uh, all, all the ones in Pittsburgh area. And we would fly down on a Friday afternoon and fly home on a Sunday evening. And you were like a senior in high school? Senior in high wow, school. That and it was the first airplane ride I ever had, okay. and an experience. Uh, um, and I'll never forget when, the first time I was in the airplane, my mother at Allegheny County Airport, here come the, we're coming home on a Sunday night. And um, 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 my dad was with my mother, and the airplane was smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, but those airplanes smoke, the, the old World War II aircraft, mm -hmm. the C-54s, uh, they smoke when you're coming in for a landing, okay? And she thought it was on fire. She was, it, was, it was funny. <laughs> It was funny. She was. It was really funny. But anyway, she got used to it uh, uh, afterward. You have to, huh? For right. sure. That's awesome. Right. Right. Boy, that's that's what an experience for that. Mm -hmm. Now, you you traveled around the world. I was I was on seven carriers. Seven <laughs> carriers. Where did you go? Uh, well, and as far as the uh, on the John F. Kennedy, the we call it gunboat diplomacy. That was. Uh, uh, Northern Atlantic, uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, around the uh, uh, South Africa, Madagascar, up that way. Uh, uh, it was a gunboat diplomacy trying to show the F-14s and the S-3s, okay, because they were brand new aircraft. And uh, everywhere you go uh, on with a battle group, military battle group, you have the Russians always following us. Okay, listening to us and following us, no matter where we go, they're always there. They're part of the fleet. Okay, so, but that's the that's the way it was. Okay, um, but that, briefly, that that brought me. I was already almost uh, oh six years, uh, no ten years in the Navy, uh, and I um, I was on there on the uh, Independence uh, for two and a half years. I started in 70, the end of 75, the beginning of 76, and then uh, in the summer of 76, okay, I, I met you guys, okay, mm -hmm. um, my, my wife Julie, mm -hmm. and uh, singing as a matter of fact, <laughs> okay, and, 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 but anyway, um, I went back on the carriers, okay, okay and uh, uh, same, 
operations, flight deck operations, and so on. But so here you are, you're, you know, what, how, you know, in your early 20s at this point, yes. perhaps, and you're mm -hmm. traveling all over the world. I know you've been to places like Sydney, Australia, mm -hmm. Hawaii, mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes. Um, how did the, and, and you mentioned um, it was 13 months that you, you were um Yes. Free. How did that change you? Well, first of all, okay, um, it changed me because of the discipline, the discipline factor. Um, I, you know, I went to St. Rita's, uh, and, and you know, as far as discipline is concerned, because I'm, uh, uh, I am a baby boomer from World War II generation, um, they actually taught us a lot of discipline, the World War II generation. Uh, uh, the, the babies that were born in 46, 7, 8, et cetera, the, and grew up in the 50s and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. that kind of discipline, uh, it was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned that at a very early age. But I, um, uh, you know, I, as I adapted to the military, it was a lot easier for me to adapt than it was for some of the other sailors, my friends or whatever, um, I think it's because of the small town that we come from. Um, you know, they, they build discipline. I went to Conazal High School, Guybel High School. All my friends that I grew up with were either Guybel or Conazville, mm -hmm. but they instilled discipline, okay? Uh, they, you know, there was dress codes back then. There were, it, it, cult, it cultivates the discipline. Right. Okay, but that's, I think, some of that is missing nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to say, you know, sound like I'm an old fuddy right now because mm -hmm. I'm going to say, you know, what's wrong with this generation? Mm -hmm. Because this generation, they're old enough at 18 to go out and die for their country. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but my point is, it's a, it was a little different back then. I was prepared, sure. let's put and it that way. And that's, been, and that's important, that's important, especially for it to be in such a, in such a place, such a different place. You're here. In, Connellsville, and then you're in Japan. So, you know, <laughs> then I'm in Hong Kong. <laughs> 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 then we're on the flight line. Then we're on Yankee Station. Uh, we were doing sorties uh, North Vietnam and supporting our fellow Marines, mm -hmm. which are part of the Navy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hear that from my Marine friends <laughs> here pretty <laughs> soon. Well, no, we're not. Yes, we are. <laughs> they get a paycheck. Says Navy <laughs> Department. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then on land, later in your military right. career, what did you do? Because you were in the, the, the military before you retired for Long time. 31 plus years. Yes, yes. So after ship time, coming back home, then well, They had a program uh, since I, uh, before that. I was on seven carriers training pilots to land, and that's a little, that's a demanding job because mm -hmm. that, that's worse than combat operations, <laughs> trying to get pilots to qualify, okay, uh, to land and take off on a carrier. On a carrier. Like on that, carriers. Like you're talking about, you're talking about that. <laughs> okay. You know, we all know what it's like to, like, we see a runway, we see an airport, we know what that's like. Yeah. But for an airplane <laughs> to go off of a ship. Right. When I was, when I was on the uh, RVH-3, mm -hmm. Reconnaissance Attack Squadron 3, with the vigilantes, uh, that's the training squadron. That's where the new pilots come in after they fly training. They come in and they get briefed on the aircraft and they're, they're taught the aircraft and then we have to take them whatever carrier is in port. That's why I was on seven or eight carriers. We have to go out and qualify these people. And uh, we have a crew. We have a crew assigned to each aircraft and we have to be on the flight deck when they're landing from here to there when they're landing and taking off, okay? Some do, they do very well. Some don't do very well. Uh, they wash out. Uh, I noticed that uh, a lot of the Marine pilots uh, did extremely well. Uh, that, uh, of course, they're part of the Navy too. Uh, you know, the Naval Aviation, Marine Aviation is one, we're, you know. But uh, that was challenging. And yeah, there were accidents. Sure. There were, there were accidents, decisions. yes. Yeah. I mean, you're landing on a postage stamp. Exactly, so, yeah. and you were right there. <laughs> I'm right there. <laughs> there there's about yeah, there's about 180 of us right yeah. there, all over the flight yeah. deck. Okay. Yeah. Never complain about your job. <laughs> never, never. <It's> so stressful. <laughs> but it was a lot harder than uh, actually combat operations. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it was. Yeah. I can I can appreciate that. Okay, 
So you came back, you became a recruiter. Yes. Um, uh, it was a new program they had. It was called Hometown Recruiting. So I was a first class, first class then. And uh, they sent me back to Uniontown as a, uh, what we call bag-toting recruiter, as a recruiter. Now, when I came back as a recruiter, the draft uh, ended uh, that even though you still register for the draft today, but it ended in 75 after the Vietnam conflict. But I recruited, uh, but they found out that I could do it so well, they, they had a program called the Career Recruiting Force. And I was selected for the Career Recruiting Force. So I came out of Naval Aviation, went into the Career Recruiting Force, and from there I made Chief, uh, Senior Chief, and Master Chief, and was Command Master Chief. Um, and I was in uh, actually the Southwest, um, Northeast United States uh, area, area three, which is uh, the Southern states. Um, uh, but I've been all over the country. Uh, but my, my eight, last 18 years in the military was recruiting, mm -hmm. recruiting command, mm -hmm. right. When you were called back to service recently, how's that? Yes, well, uh, um, uh, I was, um, it's called the uh, Secretary of the Navy's Retiree Council. Mm -hmm. And it's a four-year tour, okay? Um, it's, a, it's reserve, it's, li it's like a reserve. Uh, once a quarter, we have video conferencing um, because of all the advancements. Uh, I can stay in my Navy room and home and, mm -hmm. and conference with my fellow uh, council members. What it is, the Secretary of the Navy, uh, we, we, uh, he gives us problems with uh, uh, retirees and their families, medical care, things like this. Um, uh, and we have to, it's like a think tank. Mm -hmm. And we present all that, okay, to the Secretary of the Navy after we research everything and come up with recommendations on how to handle this. And then in turn, basic, this is basic. The Secretary takes it to the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of Defense, of course, takes it to the Armed Services Committee and so on and so forth. It's, it's like that, mm -hmm. but it's more for the military retirees. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, the Secretary of the, the Navy and Marine Corps are one, mm -hmm. uh, the Secretary of the Navy is responsible not only for the Navy, but the Marine Corps also. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but every, uh, every service has the same thing, Air Force Retiree Council, mm -hmm. Army Retiree Council, and so on, okay? Um, but that's, uh, we're going, we, there's some problems they've already given us that we're gonna be, re, and, you know, helping with right. and making our recommendations, helping, right? Because before you got into that, you were, you were working in vocational rehabilitation. Yes, I, I was with the Department of Veterans Affairs for 21 years. Mm -hmm. I started in compensation and pension division. Uh, that was a great experience because uh, every time somebody applies for service connection, disability, pensions, or whatever. I was what they call a developer. I would take the case in and develop the case, medical records, history, military records, etc. and I would prepare the package before I would hand it over to the rating board. And the rating board would make a decision whether they're service connected uh, 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 or not service connected or that kind of thing. So if they were injured, um, then what you were doing is you were helping them um, maybe continue their education, become trained in some mm -hmm. way, um, even retrofitting their houses so that, yes. so that they, could, they, could, they could function and work and be successful. Yes. When I first started, okay, I, I've already had, uh, I worked on my, under mass, uh, my undergraduate degree in psychology and uh, management supervision, a minor in that. And um, uh, I decided to go ahead for a master's in education counseling, guidance counseling, secondary, post-secondary, high school, and certification. And I was responsible for uh, when the war broke out in 20, 20, 2001 or shortly thereafter, Okay, I was um, responsible for the severely wounded, the first severely wounded coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan during the first part of the war. And there were a lot in Western Pennsylvania that were injured uh, and so on, this uh, post 2001. And um, I was also responsible to evaluate if the veteran can be employed or retrained. Under chapter 31, vocational rehab, we 
uh, we are responsible for retraining uh, the veteran, mm -hmm. okay, in, into a career grouping that would not aggravate mm -hmm. the service-connected disability. Mm -hmm. It has to be something sedentary or mm -hmm. it depends on what they can do and what they can't do. And of course, the doctors tell us uh, what they can do and can't do. My job is to make sure I pay for the education and make sure that they do well. Mm -hmm. And if the veteran cannot, if the veteran cannot work, uh, then it's my responsibility to go ahead and uh, counsel the spouse. Now, his spouse is the breadwinner. Under chapter uh, chapter thirty five, uh, we would uh, go ahead and retrain retrain the spouse and the children. All the children have scholarships to college. Okay, uh, up to forty five months. Okay, and so on. But someone who has a serious employment handicap it gives me a little bit more tools under the law, tools to help that veteran, okay, uh, to advance even higher uh, than a 40, 48 month scholarship to a master's degree, and in some cases, a doctorate degree. Okay, I've had a few of those. Okay, uh, thanks to back then President Bush because um, one of one of my one of my one of my corpsmen okay had, he had lost one of his legs um, uh, who's a Marine Corpsman Navy Corpsman uh, handle the Marine Corps uh, and uh, uh, President Bush went to see him at Bethesda Naval Hospital I was there the day before and and President Bush asked him uh, what do you want to be someday, and so on and so forth. He said, I want to be a doctor. And President Bush says, well, we're going to make that happen. And yeah, the, the VA made it happen. And I, I, the VA has, you never hear the good things the VA does. There's a lot of things justifiably that, you know, but uh, justifiably, but uh, we have our problems just like any other government agency. But anyway. That's exciting. That's so neat. That's it is. Cool. So now then you took, you now you're taking that in your retirement mm -hmm. and you want to talk about what you're doing in the community. Okay. That same kind of thing now, um, tell us about that. Well, first of all, I didn't retire until what, 69, age 60, coming up on 69. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I spent 21 years in an A and, and, and excuse me, in the uh, uh, VA. And uh, I was trying to figure out with all this running around, I was covering five states. Mm -hmm with this independent living stuff and, and everything and re reconstruction and all that. I'm all this running around, all of a sudden, I'm, what am I going to do? So Bob Broderick um, um, was, uh, is the organist up at IC and he says, you ought to think about St. Vincent de Paul. And he was the president of the St. Vincent de Paul. And in 19, 2017, 2017 uh, I joined St. Vincent de Paul Conference in Connellsville, the Catholic community. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul, our conference, and uh, and all, and I have to I have to say I had I didn't think I'd, I'd have the VA in this yet, but my first case uh, serving the poor, I was bringing food uh, to their homes uh, up in the mountains and so on, uh, and uh, I was just you know counseling and giving out the food and all this, and I saw this army sticker on this car, okay, and I says. Um, who was in the army? Anybody in the army? And the gentleman who was um, disabled, by the way, uh, he was uh, in the army and so on. And I said, uh, of course, being where I came from, I said, um, have you ever applied for VA benefits? Okay, being, I, I, I can say I'm an expert in VA benefits. Uh, but I, I, I started to screen him a little bit. And then lo and behold, um, 96 cases later, okay, uh, there have been life-changing, life-changing uh, benefits uh, that they've earned while they were on active duty. Some of them didn't even know that they had them. So uh, after about a couple years with St. Vincent de Paul working cases and so on and working veterans cases, uh, the caseload is getting larger for veterans and that's all I do now under St. Vincent de Paul. And recently, Dana at the Community Ministries um, uh, she, uh, we're going to be offering a veteran clinic every other week, every other Wednesday, okay, from nine until three in the afternoon. She's, she's taking appointments now of some of the people she, because they ask, are you a veteran? 
and we're going to set you up an appointment with Ron, you know, that kind of thing. That's Connellsville Community. Connelly, Connellsville Community Ministries. That's fantastic. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. They're going to start doing that, and that's going to provide a new service that they are able to yes, indeed. offer. Yes, Very indeed. Very good. Very good. All right. Yes, indeed. That's exciting. So outside of the military, outside of your, um, your work, mm -hmm. you know, your outreach that you do with veterans, you know, you're you're a singer, you know, and so you and I know that very well because that's how we that's how we met. Yeah. Um, you were you, you sang at our cousin's mm -hmm. wedding. Yep. And uh, Marianne Helen came out. I mean, you were you were the talk of the town. Like you, where was his voice come from in this little church in Connellsville? And uh, because you came home from the Navy. Yes. Being at our cousin's wedding. Yes. And the rest is history because that's where you met my sister. Exactly. And we're so glad <laughs> that you did. Um, and so am I. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I met you guys. <laughs> you were such a blessing, my goodness. And so, um, but you also, you, you serve, you know, you sing at veterans' events. And yes. You, and you support those things. You, using your voice, you sing in our church and, mm -hmm. um, to, to do that. So, um, yeah. You know, um, uh, that has always been with me. Uh, when I was young at St. Rita's grade school, okay, um, we had Rosella Toulouse, uh, who was our little altar boy, uh, altar boy uh, choir director and so on, and she did a wonderful job. Uh, and of course, my mother, she sang with me all the time when I was a kid, and, uh, uh, and I sang a lot. Okay, and then we decided that when I got a little older, uh, you know, like 12, 13, we started to play the guitar and we, we started with the Tondells. There was me, my, myself, my brother Mike, Ronnie on Dyke, Bob Langdon, and so on, and we played music uh, back in the uh, uh, early 60s and um, 65, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, I've been singing uh, at Connellsville High School. Uh, I was in state chorus, regional chorus, that kind of thing. And, uh, but when I got into the Navy, which was interesting, um, I, I took my guitar with me, okay? And when you're at sea and you have downtime, I would sit, uh, the carriers have these survival nets around the flight deck. And because when those tra pilots are training, if they're coming at you, you jump in the net, okay? To, get, to avoid them, okay? <laughs> But anyway, I would sit there and play the guitar, okay? And the Navy band was aboard the, the carrier because it was a flagship carrier, the Admiral, three-star Admiral was aboard. And they had the Navy band there, and uh, they, they saw that I played and I sang in and all that. And I started singing with the Navy band, even in Vietnam, okay? Um, um, singing with the Navy band. No, I wasn't part of the Navy band, but I sang for the Navy band whenever they needed somebody. And then they found out I saw, sang the national anthem. And since I've started in 1967 and eight, okay, in the Navy, I've sang the national anthem for the Navy for 31 years, okay. Uh, uh, I sang for the Blue Angels, the national anthem, uh, and I did Broadway shows on my own. Uh, but when I, I, I always remember when I was younger, um, uh, uh, out in California, uh, there was a Merv Griffin show, and I was singing with the Navy band, and we were doing uh, Elvis, Neil Diamond, um, that Frank Sinatra, and all that. And uh, we we freelanced at night. That's how I bought my S S three ninety six Camaro. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> because we were we were playing in the band, and uh, uh, while I was stationed in San Diego, uh, I would sing every Friday and Saturday night on the. Uh, at the piano bar at the Del Coronado Hotel mm -hmm. and, and, and so on. And uh, mm -hmm. it was a way for me to make extra money so I can buy this Camaro, okay? <laughs> this Camaro. But anyway, I, I sang the national anthem for, for the Navy D in Washington, D.C., at the Capitol, at the uh, Bethesda, at Walter Reed, at the Navy Memorial. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've sang for the Steelers, I sang for Pirates, San Diego Chargers, Atlanta, uh, Miami, long ago, okay, um, and so on. And uh, the Pirates, I think I did about 15, 20 games for the Pittsburgh Pirates uh, in dress whites uh, back then. Oh, yeah. Your voice is amazing. Oh, thank it you. It's such a gift. Thank yeah. you. I have my mother and Rosella Toulouse to thank for that, okay? Yeah. Oh, let me tell you, a legend in our town. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
absolutely. And I know that you know your your greatest joy is your family, and you've been married to. Oh yes. For, for how many years? <laughs> oh my, it's 40, 45 years now. Uh, when I came home to sing, uh, I was on the USS Independence. Remember the jet engine test cell operator? Mm -hmm. And I was on the Independence, and uh, I just came home, and I was talking to my mother, and I talked to Barbara, Aunt Barb, mm -hmm. and they said, you got to come home and sing for my son's wedding. And uh, I said, okay. And uh, I went to the Cleo. I said, Mom, I'm not going to wear my uniform. Get my suit in the cleaners down at Norwich Village at, on 8th Street. <laughs> and I'm walking in there, and there's this girl in front of me, right? And she's, uh, and she's saying, we're, we're the, she's picking up dresses and so on and so on and so forth. And they were talking about a wedding. And I said, well, it seems like everybody's getting married nowadays. And she says, yeah, I got a wedding. And I said, yeah, I have one too. And that's how I found out. That's how I she found out. She didn't realize you were going to the same wedding. It, right. I, I, and, you know, well, I knew. I told, no, I told her Mascarelli wedding. Oh, yes. And she says, oh, yeah. And then, you know, I, I, of course, being a sailor, you know, mm -hmm. I said, wow. I said, okay. So I went there and I was singing for the wedding and and I saw her coming down the aisle. She was a, one of the bridesmaids or whatever, coming down the aisle and so on. And I, the band I knew, because I was part of the Tom Dales, the band I knew, uh, uh, I sang with them at the reception also. Mm -hmm. And then I got to know you, I got to know your family, yes. especially Aunt Barb, no, Aunt uh, Helen, Helen, because she knew my mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I, that's how I really got to oh, know your family. Helen made such a big deal about you. <laughs> we were just, we just knew, you, could just, you know when you know there's change in the air, and, and that was when you came into our life. Yeah, Definitely it, changing the It was really, that was really something. Oh, that's awesome. Went back on the independence, and the rest is history. That's awesome. Three children and six, six grandchildren. Six grandchildren, <laughs> two in college. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> one, one seven and four. And... Mm -hmm. uh, Really, really cool stuff. And yeah. Ava and uh, Ashlyn, and uh, I couldn't ask for a better situation, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, you know, we like to say, uh, you know, I was in the military, but so was my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife is retired from the military just like I am because um, uh, uh, they ha the, the, wives ha the wives and children, they have to take over when we're in combat or we're gone. Mm -hmm. They are the leaders, okay? And it takes, when we come back, it takes a, a, a very special woman to be married to a military man, okay? Let alone police officers, okay? I have the utmost respect for police officers and their families and the military, of course. Because and, and they, they are making a sacrifice too. So exactly, yeah. exactly, yes. Well, Ron, thank you so much for sharing <laughs> a bit of your life and, and what you're doing as a veteran outreach here locally mm -hmm. in St. Vincent de Paul and Chronicle Community. So yes, looking forward to that. You definitely, retirement looks, it's getting busier and busier for you, so. Yep. I'm, no, I'm no spring chicken anymore, but now I'm active, and that's, that's the key. Active. You are very active, and you have so much to give, so thank you for all that you do. Thank you for what you do. Thank you thank very you. much. The patriotic and Christian values Ron was raised with have formed a foundation in his life. Building on that foundation were the influences of the people around him. His experience in serving in the U.S. Navy and this gift he has to sing and to serve. On a personal note, I've seen Ron so often go above and beyond to be there wherever there is for people when they need it most. In the spirit of duty and faith in action, Ron quietly uses his God-given gifts to make life better for others. Thank you to Ron and to the veterans and their spouses for your service to our country. Thanks so much for being with us.